evolving. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so we mentioned briefly that jujitsu for competition, uh, I think I told you was it a uh, Danaher video that I saw. Yeah. Where he was saying it's the single mo- least effective technique that's just a staple of jujitsu and never seems to work. And he was talking about getting an Americana. Yeah. Right. Uh, mostly, was he sp- from a certain position, like cross body or, um, or any? I don't know if he specified, but typically people go for it cross body, I would think, or maybe mount. Yeah. And even Kimura, correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems that it's reached a point in competition where you can use it to sweep. But it, no, it, people uh, can finish. Kimura is good. Okay. Just the structure of the Kimura is that when you're applying the pressure, you're also naturally controlling their body somehow. When you apply this pressure, I don't know, it's hard to control their body at the people same time. People kind of roll away from you. Yeah. And- I mean, uh, we saw Derek uh, Lewis, the, this Russian world champion in Sambo, he tried to do it to him twice, and that's how, the, how he, Derek Mitchell got up. That's yeah. how he escaped. And Meg Ellicott, I think it was his last fight, he tried it on the guy, and the guy escaped. So um, I think part of it is both of those, uh, Meg Ellicott's opponent and uh, Mitchell, that they're kind of barrel-chested Derek Lewis, guys. Right. Derek Lewis. Yeah. They're, um, Derek Lewis, yeah. They're barrel-chested guys. So... That kind of maybe makes it less stable that to control them. He, the, he was fighting the guy who got the... Um, no, he was ta- a different guy. Oh, that Dan. wasn't the guy who no. tapped him from oh, yeah. it was someone else? Oh, yeah. Okay. I, think so, it's, I think it's Bluggen off or something like that. Yeah, I don't know. But the the thing is, he he doesn't... It's not like, oh, I have a, an escape from Americana. Like, it seems like just... No, he of, just instinctively turns and rolls and gets the heck up. Yeah. And it works. Yeah. 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 So... I guess my question, first of all, you agree with that, right? Like it's it, for yeah. competition. It's just well, sort of first of all, it. it's empirically correct. Like when you look at here's the techniques that are winning tournaments at the highest level, that technique doesn't show up. So if Dan Hurd just says that, you know, that's utterly valid. And then you can assume that it's because it's something mechanically about it that's just not as effective, which I think it probably is. Right. Yeah. Because it's interesting because it might be, incredibly effective against an untrained oh opponent, that's a good right? point it might Dan. be like yeah. the, your best move to go to yeah you know interesting. What I mean? it's, it really yeah. changes you know so it's yeah. not like it's you can't call it ineffective i wouldn't think but i think you could you say know, it your, seems to be non-effective in in jiu-jitsu competition you know yeah yeah so then i guess i don't is that the one move that comes to mind or you think there's a whole slew of things that well there's that certain things that um I don't do that much because uh, I don't think it's worth doing. Like um, some people will try to do a modified scarf hold. You know what that is? That kind of modified case of Katami where they're in side control and they pick up your near side arm, arm and they kind of sit th- sit their legs yeah. through. I generally find that's not stable. And sometimes in the transition to sit through, you're really unstable and there's an opportunity for the guy to escape. So... They put I, you on your back, is that? They could put you on yeah. your back. That's the risk. So the only time I lift my front shoulder up when I'm in side control is when I'm so dominated I'm over their face. You know what I mean? Where you're going for like a side control crucifix like, you know, like uh, Khabib might do and start pu- punching the guy. But when I'm lower on their body, I never want to lift up that front shoulder just because it's such a perfect platform for the, the your opponent to push on and create some space so i don't do that i don't teach that to anybody anymore yeah it's very interesting dan there's so many techniques in jujitsu uh i think there's one school of thought is we're going to teach the white belts this these techniques and then we're going to teach the blue belts these the purples another set and then the black belts will get a completely different set of techniques but i think it's probably more effective to to say let's teach the white belts what works at the black belt level and just focus on those techniques so they don't have to acquire and then or relearn then or dismiss techniques as as they progress that doesn't make any sense to me you know i like the techniques that are that i can say to my students yeah i use this to win a white belt match and then i've used this to win a black belt match that's a probably pretty sound technique right right but it also calls into question I mean, I'm sure it can be done, depends on how it's done, but 
the sort of idea of like here are the moves to get the blue belt and here are the moves yeah, to get the like purple anymore. belt. Yeah, yeah I don't like that anymore. Yeah, I don't like that. It has to be adjusted, I would think. Right? To just yeah. be like, I'm, you, I'm you thinking about it now. It's just effectiveness. You know, it, what it really comes down to, if you're going to measure somebody's jujitsu, is how effective are they, right? I think that's, ulti that's ultimately the most important thing, right? Right. Because you could, if you have sort of these, you could 